Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about spirit levels, and we'd like to thank Isaac Berry for liking and sharing the podcast. Ancient Egypt was one of the first civilizations to use levels for building, and they created this wooden A frame that had a string at the top of the A, and it had a weight on a string that passed the horizontal piece, you know, if you're making an A shape, uh-huh. and they had a mark in the center of this. So if the string was hanging straight down and it was on that mark, you knew that it was level because mm-hmm. the feet were parallel to that center horizontal bar. So when they sat it on something, they knew if it was level, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> they built the pyramids using this little A-shaped frame. And a lot of slaves. The, <laughs> <laughs> the spirit level is a bubble in the center of a vial, and this was invented in 1661. In the 1920s, Henry Zeman was the founder of the Empire Level Company, and Hmm. he created the first kind of modern spirit level. They're still around today, right? Still around, and still one of the top-rated level manufacturers. And they used to use, so they called it a spirit level because they used spirits or alcohol (laughs) as the fluid. And some companies are using mineral spirits, Hmm. I think just to keep the spirit name going. But most (laughs) manufacturers, the most common liquid is going to be ethanol. When you get into some of your more expensive levels, they're using a wide variety of chemicals to keep it from freezing and Mm. and keep that bubble, if it has impact, from breaking into multiple bubbles. So it's interesting, the technology just in bubbles. (laughs) So a spirit level, some people call it a bubble level, is just a great basic tool for projects around the house. Some people call it levels. Or a level. (laughs) <laughs> and the vial inside this level is going to have a bubble between two lines. And when the bubble is centered between those two lines, you know that whatever you're measuring is either level or it's plumb or it's 45, depending on the measurement. Hmm. And when you're shopping for a level, you want to compare how easy it is to see the bubble and the lines. So I would look at a few when I'm thinking about purchasing one. Because the, they do come in different colors, right? Yeah, most of them are going to be a yellowish hue, like mm-hmm. the Empire. They have the blue color. Some are fluorescent. Some are lighted, so, so it's very easy to see. But the easier it is to see in a full line all the way around mm-hmm. the vial really makes it easy, depending on your angle. The bigger the bubble is to those lines, so let's say you have your lines and you have a very large bubble very close to or even just touching those lines, mm-hmm. you're going to get the best measurement. It's going to be the most accurate. Okay. If you have a, a vial that's less expensive, it has a small bubble and the lines are further apart, you can actually be off quite a bit and it still is. <laughs> it seems like it's kind of level, but it's not. So, so a bigger bubble is better. When you're purchasing the level at the store, you want to make sure you take the time to test it for accuracy. You're going to put the level either on the countertop or a floor where it's easy to repeat the exact position where you put it. Okay. So like on a countertop, I would put it right against the edge of the countertop. Mm -hmm. On a floor, I'd use the floor tiles and where the seams are of the tiles. I'd set it there and then check the center vial. And this is usually going to be the horizontal vial so that you're checking for level and see exactly where that bubble lines up in uh, relation to the lines. Okay. And now you're going to spin the level in the exact same place 180 degrees, so you're going to reverse the right. location of it and see if the bubble lines up in the same spot. Once you do that, now you're going to flip it over upside down and repeat it, mm-hmm. and that bubble should be in the exact same spot for all four of those reference points. So, what if it's and not? So, then put it back in the back, <laughs> grab another <laughs> level, and do it again. And just whip it <laughs> right, right, just right this to the garbage. <laughs> And then you want to do that same test with the outside vials, which are usually your vertical or your plumb. Okay. And then just repeat it. And now you know you have a good level. And plus it's good to know, like, the weight. And also most levels are going to have an opening for your hand to go through that, to carry it around. If you wear gloves on a lot of your projects, I would make sure it's big enough so you can comfortably get your hand in there. Right. For most projects around the house, you can get by with a torpedo level. And this is a small level, usually 8 to 10 inches long, about an inch wide. And this is just a great size to keep in your toolbox or your tool bag. I would get one with three vials, one for level, so your horizontal, one for plumb, your vertical, and a 45-degree reading. 
And if you work with conduit or steel studs, a magnetic level is really convenient. And you can also use this for appliances. So if right. you're leveling a washer dryer, you just stick it to the side and then you're able to level the feet without right, having... Like um, a dishwasher. Right. Yeah, yeah. It does a nice job. If you have a lot of remodeling to do, I would have either a two foot or a four foot along with this, a nice mm -hmm. carpenter's level. And a two foot level is just easy to store, easy to carry. A four foot level is going to be more precise. And it's also really convenient for using as a straight edge when you're marking things right. like wood or drywall. And some of them are really heavy. You could use it as a weapon. There you go. <laughs> On your two or four foot levels, I would make sure that you have three vials, one for level, plumb, and 45. And some levels are going to have vials with two sets of lines. So when the bubble touches that outer line, you have a 2% grade, and that gives you the slope. If you're doing plumbing projects, let's say you're putting in waste lines. In most communities, they want you to have a 2% grade. And what does that mean? So, well... With a lot of projects like sidewalks, rain gutters, they want it to drop a quarter inch every foot. Hmm. And so what's nice about some of these levels is it'll have two sets of lines. And when you adjust your material and that bubble touches that the outside edge of that second line, you okay. know that you have that 2% grade. Huh. If you don't have double lines on your level, you can shim up one end and create the correct slope. For your project. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're building a wood porch on the back of your house. You usually want that decking to slope about an eighth of an inch per foot away from the house. Hmm. Do most people know that? I, I or are you just like, I, hey, it should be level? <laughs> no, no, you don't want standing water. I would, huh. I would think if you're building a deck, you probably read some plans. Well, or read, read some, <laughs> watched a video. <laughs> so let's say you have a four foot level and you want an eighth of an inch of slope per foot. You can tape a half inch shim to the end of your four foot level and you're going to point that shim end mm -hmm. away from the house put it on your framing and now you're going to adjust your framing till that bubble is in the center of the <laughs> lines and now you have the correct slope away from the house hopefully <laughs> <laughs> you can use a carpenter or a torpedo level for setting fence posts railings porch posts mailbox posts and you just work back and forth on two adjoining sides of the post or you can get a post level. So this is a two-sided level. It's at a 90 degree angle with vials on the two sides. And it just makes it very easy to plumb up a vertical post. Okay. And then most of these are going to come with some type of either a hook or a hole that you can put rubber bands and hold it in place. Hmm. And then some of them come with straps. Nice. For leveling tables and appliances, you can pick up a circular level, and this is working at 360 degrees at once. Outrageous. So, so rather than rotating a traditional carpenter's level back and forth, this has a circular vial, and when the bubble is in the center, you know that it's level. If you're doing a project like building a paver patio next to your house, you want this to grade away from the house, you can use a line level. Mm -hmm. So you're going to put two stakes up, one stake by the house and one at the end of where your patio is going to be, and you can pull a nylon string tight between them, put this line level on it, and then adjust the string until it's perfectly level. And now you can measure down from that string to the paver base right by the house, and then you know how much it needs to drop at the end of this, okay. and measure from the string down, and you'll have your perfect pitch. Are you going to explain what a line level looks like? So a, a line level is just, it's almost like just the vial itself, and it has little hooks hmm. that are going to grab onto the string. Interesting. So just very small, very easy to use. I was looking at Joe Truini's book on tiling, and on the cover, it's just a big picture of the Stanley Fat Max spirit level. Hmm. So it's like the main thing on the cover. Instead of a tile? <laughs> yeah, really. And I love Joe Truini. He helped build the Pez factory. We actually had him on when we were talking about sheds. Right. Anyway, for tile projects, Joe is suggesting for kitchens and bathrooms that if you're doing these projects, you should have a torpedo level, a two-foot and a four-foot level, hmm. along with a framing square, a layout, and combination square. A level is really important, and I don't know if most people think about for it. For a ton of projects. Mm -hmm. You use a spirit level for putting up pre-hung doors, replacing windows, installing flooring, drop ceilings, kitchen cabinets, chair rail, countertops, patios, porches. If you were putting up a retaining wall, you'd want to use a level. Shelving, hanging pictures, mm -hmm. it's nice to have them level. And then <laughs> even putting up switch and outlet covers. So Milwaukee has a really interesting 10-inch torpedo level, 
It has four vials, so you can use it for level, plumb, 45 degree, and 30 degree measurements. Hmm. It is a V shape on top that holds on to pipe and four rare earth magnets. And then what's interesting is it has this center area that locks on to switches and outlets, so you can easily twist them and level them, and then use the top edge to oh. level the cover plate. It is annoying when they're not level. Did you know rare earth magnets are the strongest type of permanent magnet made? Yes, I did, because you've spoken of it before. <laughs> there you go. Did you know the assassin bug stacks dead ant bodies on its back to confuse predators? How does this tie into So levels? it creates this huge ball larger than its own body. It kills these ants by injecting it with a chemical that paralyzes them. Uh -huh. And then it also breaks down all the tissue inside the body. It sucks out the insides of their body for nutrients. That's how it eats. Oh, your excitement and, is disturbing. And, <laughs> that it secretes the sticky solution. It sticks them together and puts it on its back. They carry as many as 20 dead ants, hmm. and it protects it from spiders. Nice. The scientists did some research where they would take all the ants, the dead ants, off assassin bugs, mm -hmm. and they were killed 10 times more often by spiders than the assassin bugs that had all these dead ants on their back. Hmm. Seriously, how does this apply to levels? <laughs> well, you said you knew my other thing, so I wanted to come uh -huh, up with okay. something you didn't know. <laughs> the most popular material for your spirit level is either going to be aluminum, plastic, or wood. With the wood levels, some of them are very beautiful, but they're going to need more care. They have to stay dry to prevent warping. That lacquer coating that they put on wood levels, it slowly breaks down over time. So most manufacturers recommend that you have to coat it with a linseed oil on a, as a regular routine. Okay. Aluminum is the most popular. It's very easy to care for. It's very long-lasting. Plastic is lightweight, inexpensive, and less likely to scratch surfaces. Hmm. And then the I-beam style. So you have I-beam style and a box beam style. I-beam, if you look at it from the side, it looks like a capital I. And a box beam, it's four-sided like a box. The box beams are considered a little stronger depending on how it's manufactured. Hmm. But both, if you treat them well, both are going to last. Most of these are going to probably last you a lifetime. Nice. When you're comparing levels, I would get something that either has end caps or shock control. That's a nice feature. What is and it? So this is on the end. This is going to help protect the vials because they're fairly delicate. We want to try to control the shock as much as we can. Right. And especially for aluminum levels, they can sometimes scratch delicate surfaces. So it's nice to cover the ends. Right. And I've got this Craftsman 4-foot aluminum I-beam level. My dad picked up for me when I started investing in real estate. Got to be you know well over 30 years old. <laughs> Has four vials. One of the cases that cover the vial is cracked. So this thing is scratched. It has paint on it, tar, <laughs> and it just really looks cool. And I check this before I do any projects. I always double check mm -hmm. to make sure the vials are all still good. And it's still good after nice. all this time. I've got a two foot empire level. And then I picked up this two foot plastic master mechanic level. Mm -hmm. And this is just a just very inexpensive. I like it because it has a ruler on one side, right. lightweight, and it only runs around six dollars. Oh, so, that's not so bad. and what's wild is most of these levels, the manufacturers give a lifetime warranty. Mm -hmm. So if the level, the vial itself goes bad or you break it, almost all these companies will replace it for free. Oh, well, who knew? Which, which, which is pretty interesting. <laughs> and then I've got a little plastic one, and I, I don't know who it is because I was checking it, you know, while we we're doing the research for mm -hmm. this. And the brand name is worn off, and I use it all the time. <laughs> so anybody out there who is, you know, works for a brand. Make sure you can always read the name of your company. Some top-rated spirit levels, Empire, Johnson, Level & Tool, Capro, K-A-P-R-O, Stabila, S-T-A-B-I-L-A, Milwaukee, and Klein. And if you're in Europe, Hultafor has a couple of really interesting-looking levels. You're not going to spell so, that? H-U-L-T-A-F-O-R. So one I saw, it's very long, and it has slots that you can put screws through. So you can screw this to your wall, level oh, yeah, it up. Yeah. Show me the video on this. And then you can put cabinets on top of it, so all your <laughs> cabinets are, are so just really cool. And some of their vials have three pairs of lines. No way. That's so very interesting. Do you have anything else to add? When you're purchasing a level, I would check for the accuracy of the vials while you're in the store. and then <laughs> All of our listeners are going to be on the floor checking the levels. <laughs> <laughs> Annoying the retailers. Mm. 
You want to check your level for accuracy before each project. For projects around the house, a torpedo level and a two-foot level are good basic sizes to start with. Mm -hmm. And then I would add a four-foot level if you do a lot of projects or a lot of remodeling. And longer is going to be more accurate. And then remember with your bubble, bigger is better. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you think